Okay, well, as you may have noticed, when you get a new set of pastels, a lot of times you don't have, you know, there's, there's a lot of bright colors, which look lovely in the package, but you find they're not really that useful. It turns out, as a pastelist, a lot of times our best friends are neutral colors. And unless you're getting like a really big set or buying special neutral sets, you're not getting enough neutral colors. So I'm going to show you a way to take a lot of your, you know, pastel colors that you don't use or as you get, you can see I've got a lot of crumbs here. And Lynn was so nice to give me a, a, a bunch of boxes of crumbs of different uh, pastels. They're too small to really work with anymore, but they're still nice pastels. So you just put those aside. You know, these were for my studio. I save them, but I break a pastel off or, you know, heaven forbid when you drop them, you know, you end up with crumbs. You know, you, you gotta do something with them. You just don't wanna throw them away because you know, they're, they're always useful to recycle. So this is a way of taking your old pastels and making new pastels out of them. So you can see I just dumped a bunch of different pastel chunks. It's mostly blues and some greens and a few lights. And I'm just gonna grind them up with a pestle. Yeah. No, it doesn't. That, that, that was, yeah, I, actually, someone had asked earlier. All pastels are pretty much made of the same thing, which is pigment and uh, gum uh, trianth, dump, gum tragacanth, which is the binder. So they're all held together. New pastels and hard pastels are hard basically because they're created under pressure, whereas soft pastels, you know, they just mix together the the, the the binder and the pastel, and uh, you know, use either water or what I'm going to use alcohol because it dries quicker. To uh, you know, hold, you know, just to you know, to moisten it up and make a paste out of it, and then you roll the paste out and like you know, Terry Ludwig just does big sheets and cuts them like brownies. So that, you know, that's that's what you know, that's sort of what we're going to be doing, but on a much smaller scale. Just going through and grinding those things down. It's not, it's not going to be a perfect grind by any means. There's part of the process. Of, but you can see all those together made this really lovely neutralized or light bluish gray. And so just do a couple more grinds here. Just trying to crush all this thing. I'm doing a little larger load than normal, so that's why it's a lot harder to grind. So now that I'm at that stage where most everything's ground up. What I do is I take my little handy sifter here and I'll just take all the stuff I've ground up and the pestle and stick it in here. So this is a like a regular flour or granulated sugar sifter and it's got a fairly large screen in it. So that it, you know, it there you go, just zoom right in. So see what I'm left here with a lot of little chunks. So I can take these chunks that didn't get ground up in the first try and just go through and do a little more. I'm trying to break down some of those still. Pastel muscles worked out here. And we'll just do the same thing again, get a little more. And whatever's left, we just dump out. So next step, notice this is, a, this is also a, a, a strainer, but it's a much finer screen. It's a very fine screen, as a matter of fact, because you want your pastels to have a nice consistency, so you don't want chunks. And you think coming out of the, cyst, the sifter that they would all be ground fairly finely. But you'd be surprised to see. So, I'm, so this is all a very fine powder that's coming out here, and I'll help that along by just sort of trying to force as much of it 
through here as I can. Okay, so I've got, I mean, I could grind it so much, but you can see I'm left with a lot of them. It's still sand sized particles that, that if you put them in the pastel, it would be kind of grainy, so you don't want that. You want to have a nice consistency. So I am dumping that. Now, just like I'm making pasta instead of pouring an egg in there, I have 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. The reason it comes in either 70 or 91, but the 91 evaporates quicker. So, so I just make a little Pour some in there, and I may add in some more. So the goal is to try and make get this all moistened up without using too much alcohol, because if you, if you end up making soup, it just takes you a lot longer to finish the process. So I'll just pour a little bit more in. So this is what you know Terry Ludwig does, but on a much larger scale. You basically just take all the pigment, and what's nice is when you grind up the pastels, the the binder actually stays in the pastel, and you're just refreshing it by adding the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it doesn't matter. You can put new pastels and soft pastels all together, because when they're when everything's all said and done, even hard pastels will yield soft pastels, you know, in the, as the final result. Okay, so I've got enough. As long as I can make my paste, I'm good. So the trick is to get it all wet, but still keep it, you know, dry enough that you don't have to spend two hours. So what you would do is you keep on going through, and this is the tedious part. And you know, if I was, if it was real, real, real wet, Lynn would probably just shut off the camera and catch me uh, in in five minutes. But this is actually pretty good. It's not super, super wet. So with a little bit of work, you know, I just keep on going through and spreading out, which helps make it, you know, you make the paste really good and blend in any, you know, color discrepancies that are mixed in there. And they all just get blended into this paste. It also helps, the more surface I have here, helps the alcohol evaporate. You can, but it takes even longer to dry. So uh, distilled water, right? Yeah, distilled water. Yeah, distilled. Distilled. Yeah, but even that, it still takes a lot longer to dry. And this, like, this is the part that you know is the most tedious part, anyway. So you want to try and get over with as soon as possible. Keep on going through and mushing it down and spreading it out, and it'll keep getting a little stiffer. It, it, it goes from like being real loose to the consistency of like frosting. Then at a certain point, it gets really stiff, and that's when I can actually roll it out and create pastels. So at the end of the day, uh, you can you can take a, a you know each one each, every person here can take at least. Uh, I think uh, three of these and try and take, there's uh, two different color browns. So what, this is a little more red, this is a little more on the brown side. Got a nice violet and a sort of a bluish gray. And uh, see, it's, it's nice to actually have these other colors as part of your mix. And everything, this will you know, dry, I think all of those will dry a little bit lighter as all the alcohol finally gets out of them. So do you, I mean, what I find is like if I've broken one, then I can kind of put it in its own color group. Yeah. But all the dust, 
you know, it's such a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. do you, yeah, you can save, save dust, that? and you know, like all the dust that's at the bottom, you can just put that into something, and uh, you're just going to get like sort of a gray. A, you know, more likely a gray, unless you use a lot of one color a lot. Be a surprise if it's a cool gray or mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and now starting to get a little stiffer. You know, it's like beating whipped cream, it's sort of, sort of layer starts holding the, the stiff peaks. Make butter out of it at the end, right? Yeah, that's a beautiful color. Yeah, it'll be, let's see, see where it's drier? That's the actual color the pastel will be. You know, the it, the darker color is, is, is because the alcohol is still in it. So as it dries, it'll become that, that lighter color. And I can scrape all these dry bits into the mix because they'll all still blend together. How do you tell when it's blended enough? Oh, it's all blended. It's, it's all about being dry. I mean, you know, I was, uh, I think the last time I did this, I, I, the first one I did, I did a practice one and it was too wet, and I you know, and it was this fur greenish brown color, and I, I was, I Lynn likes this. It looked like it was like putting like a, like baby poop in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I've learned from that. So you really have to wait till it gets to be a, a certain stiffness. Otherwise, it all just ends up, you know, in in your hands. And you know, so. do you put a barrier on your skin at all? No, I'm. I probably should, but I don't. Yeah let alone the mask at the yeah. beginning, I would think would be wise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It hasn't killed me yet. Tough long They've actually done some studies on pastel dust at the universities, and you can look it up online, but they've shown that it's not, unless you're leaning over there and like inhaling and breathing it, Directly, it's but some people do develop sensitivities. Yeah. Skin, we, have, we have we have yeah. friends who yes. can't Probably do cabin. pastel classes anymore because they just developed a sensitivity. They, of course, they have like asthma or something like that, anyways, which is a contributing factor. Mm 